scale presentation and the questions that, and answers that could go with the presentation. Uh, in Google Slides, I'm also gonna turn on what's called closed captioning. Uh, closed captioning, as we see on the bottom here, is um, a feature that as I do technology instruction, I find just absolutely priceless. And this is real time uh, uh, translation of my voice to text. Can everybody see that okay? Question mark? <laughs> so the, the, uh, the, the technology of converting voice to text is um, not perfect. It's you know, maybe 95% or so, but given the audience of, of uh, the aging folks, uh, I find that when I do a presentation, closed captioning is very, very helpful uh, to reinforce my, my audio. Additionally, there is a similar functionality that if you're playing a YouTube video, you can turn on the uh, closed captioning and it will play the, the text associated with the audio for, for a presentation. So up top, um, you can see again what I referenced earlier. This is just Google Slides way of accepting uh, questions and, and answers during uh, the, the presentations. And I believe you can do something called upvoting. So Stephanie and Leanne and Jen and Karen, uh, Heather and team, thank you so much for allowing Western North Carolina Broadband Project to make this presentation. Um, the topic of broadband is something that people may not be familiar with. And we have the good fortune of, of several individuals, including Bill Sederberg and um, um, Stag Newman, who kind of steward through the University of North Carolina Foundation, uh, a, a special project team uh, being called the Western North Carolina Broadband Project. And uh, Anitra, are you on the phone can, on the conference? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Fantastic. Okay. So um, the Western North Carolina Broadband is a, uh, a website, wncbroadband.org, and it, uh, the web address is listed on top. You'll see what the website looks like on a, on a desktop laptop and then on a smartphone with the, this first screenshot. So with that being said, um, Anitra, if you can please provide an introduction to yourself and then I'll follow up. Hi, I'm Anitra Griffin. I am a student intern at the WNC Broadband Project. I am a computer science new media double major at UNC Asheville. And I'm very excited to be a part of the program. I've done some work in the computing as well as at computer places that refurbish computers and teach literacy to families and help them find their way to affordable and broadband and to be able to use it for education. Thank you. Fantastic. And, and Nuritara, from what I understand, you'll, you'll be returning to Asheville with UNCA starting in August. Is that still correct? Yeah, it is. All right, good, good, good. All right, and um, many of you know me as Mark, M-A-R-C Zarnecki. I'm member of Meet the Geeks, I volunteer for Asheville SCORE, uh, Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. I'm an adjunct instructor at AB Tech and probably most humbling is that I'm a volunteer for the Western North Carolina uh, Rescue Ministry. I, I work the front desk and kind of what's evolved in, in working at the front desk is uh, assisting people with technology, very similar to what Anitra mentioned just a moment ago. Um, it's uh, at the homeless shelter, uh, of course, food, uh, shelter are uh, the priority, but all of a sudden COVID came around and COVID has put an unusual uh, change in how we conduct business. And the necessity of having broadband uh, has been emphasized even more. So um, again, I keep mentioning broadband, broadband, broadband. What is broadband? Broad, broadband is a tool, let me see if I can hide this here, um, is, a, is considered high-speed internet and high-speed internet um, is uh, associated with something called bandwidth or the amount of data that can be sent through a connection. 
uh, we have the good fortune of our, our folks that are joining us here. Um, you appear to have adequate high-speed internet. And when I say adequate and, and the term high-speed internet, we associate bandwidth with something called a speed test. And we're gonna mention that in just a moment. Anitra, if you have any comments along the way, please uh, step in. Uh, if not, we'll continue with just kind of going through the website. Uh, the website wncbroadband.org talks about broadband as being technology, internet access. And uh, it could be through a satellite, it could be what's called fixed wireless, it could be mobile broadband. There are several of you that are joining video conferencing through cellular connections. Um, most of us uh, are going to be connected either through a digital sus subscriber line or a DSL, uh, which could be a, a combination of broadband delivered um, through a network of fiber and copper uh, phone lines. Uh, there's also cable. Cable is uh, over mixed coax and uh, fiber optics. And then if you have the exceptional pleasure of having super high speed internet, it is likely thanks to fiber optics or actually glass strands that carry the uh, technology over that glass fiber. Um, broadband is exceptionally important. And I think this is partially why Stephanie uh, invited me to present today. When we talk about broadband, uh, as Anita made reference to uh, earlier, um, it's providing uh, affordability for cit citizens to participate in online learning and distance education. Uh, Anitra, you, you have experienced firsthand as a college student at UNCA, COVID came around and things shifted. Uh, Anitra and I work with a couple of um, professors at uh, UNCA, and um, we have the privilege of getting some insights and learning that when UNCA went into uh, the COVID lockdown, um, most students did go home, but what UNCA actually learned was that there were about 150 students that could not uh, connect through broadband, and all of a sudden even UNCA is in a similar boat as most of us are here. Uh, Nitra, would you like to add any comments to your connectivity uh, of and using broadband? Yes, during this process as well, we found out that so many students didn't have the proper tools or the broadband themselves to be able to successfully and accurately transition into this online learning that we had to suddenly do. So people had to find out how to get internet, there had to be like new computers bought, different devices to trying to be able to accurately learn and still be a good student while in a different location or in a different place because so many people rely on the broadband and, and on computers in the university and on these public places. Very good. Thank you, Anitra. That's, that's uh, great, great comments and insights from the student perspective. Um, there is a direct correlation with broadband um, with businesses succeeding, uh, entrepreneurship, small and home-based businesses. Uh, I know I personally work with Karen Sanders who works from home and uh, Karen and I met here at our co-working space in, in Asheville. Uh, there is a, an, an association with uh, small businesses and business growth, even mid, mid-sized businesses, larger businesses, uh, kind of leading us to the, the next topic of productivity and efficiency of businesses, COVID, um, can't stop businesses and as a result the connectivity of broadband uh, has provided us to work from home if again you had the hardware the software and the internet uh, ability to connect uh, to your employer securely what I'm super excited uh, about and um, participating in Karen Sanders our inpatient advocacy she actually had a physician to step in and that physician talked about how from um, Transylvania County Brevard, he was able to use teleconferencing for some of his, his uh, patients and how it effectively did work. And uh, I think some of us are probably starting to hear even the state and the federal government are reacting to uh, telemedicine and, the, and that environment uh, in light of COVID and what we're doing. 
certainly uh, government services, um, working as a volunteer at Western Carolina Rescue Ministry. Even yesterday, I was at the front desk and while I had an opportunity, I had an individual come up and he said, Mark, I can't get to the social security office. I need to do X, Y, Z. So um, we have the, the fortune of having some Chromebooks available. I pulled out the Chromebook and we went online and I was able to help him with his social security questions and, and answers. Additionally, uh, today is tax day. I found myself last night working till about nine o'clock helping an individual do the income tax. And um, both of these individuals, they, they might have a smartphone, but they quickly realize nobody wants to be doing income tax or any kind of financial on, on a tiny screen of a smart, smart screen uh, or tablet. Um, I think we all know we are saving companies uh, money by working at home, uh, the telework. And there are pluses and minus to that. And I'd like to have some open dialogue with, with this group here. What, what is working? What isn't working? The isn't working is likely associated with folks that uh, don't have uh, the benefit of high-speed broadband and the ability to connect. And uh, the awesome news is Buncombe County is reacting. Uh, one of the reactions I've recently seen is uh, the ability to drive your vehicle up to any of Buncombe County libraries and they have increased the signal and, and installed hardware so that our Buncombe County libraries provide uh, internet access um, on the outside even though that the building may be closed you have the ability to drive up and connect to uh, a broadband that should be sufficient for doing life necessities. Um, many of you know before that I have presented uh, technology topics on social media, including Facebook, and uh, we continue to get bombarded on the topic of social isolation, how so many folks um, are not able to get out and about, and uh, social media is, is becoming more and more important. Facebook is a great tool. There are many other resources out there that I'm eager to have some questions and dialogue about towards the end of this. So in, in a highlight, um, what broadband in Western North Carolina is probably especially beneficial for telemedicine, the social, the education, the employment, the economic development. Uh, Anitra, is there anything else that you would like to add that you think is important in broadband and high-speed access? I feel like these are all very important, but people also use them now for things like gaming and like online streaming, just the more entertainment purposes, especially the youth. Good point, good point. Uh, and Anitra uh, firsthand, I think, is experiencing in her household how her ability to connect through uh, video conferencing can be affected by others uh, that might be streaming on Netflix or that might be uh, playing video games, um, those are two tremendous bandwidth resources that can affect uh, anybody's video conference. Um, this is Heather, and uh, this may sound funny to the parents on the call, but it's been a real issue. Like, I've noticed that if my um, bandwidth just isn't there, if I'm trying to have a meeting and I'm trying to keep my daughter engaged in the other room, um, fortunately, it hasn't been to be homeschooling yet, but it gets very challenging. It's who's going to win this race to make sure they have the best connection uh, and what is going to be most important in this meeting room. So I've had that issue and I know several others on this call have as well. Okay, fantastic. So um, thank you for sharing that comment, Heather. The reality is uh, there is a pipe coming to your home. That pipe is bandwidth on a copper or cable or fiber or cellular and it has limitations, it's not infinite. And uh, one of the biggest drains can be just stream, di streaming, downloading movies, playing video games. And how, how do you negotiate that with your family to optimize, you know, being able to pay bills <laughs> and, and work from home. So fantastic comments. Um, so kind of moving forward, Western North Carolina Broadband Project isn't just about the education of, of broadband and high-speed internet. Uh, there are community initiatives to do, to do samplings uh, and surveys of information of specific uh, uh, communities 
a community can be a homeowners association uh, is what we've had the, the best success with just because it's, it, it's easier to connect. It's cost, cost effective to get the survey data back. Um, Anitra is actually working with doing some survey data. Do you have any comments to add, Anitra? Um, not really, but it is a very interesting process bringing in whatever the community says about their surveys and what they think and to put it in a way for people to think about it and look and compare their own research like, oh yeah, I also use my internet to go to do telemedicine or also use my internet from Comcast, different things that are really comparable across communities. So part of the reason Western North Carolina Broadband looks at a community is um, by no means can we be the superman, the superwoman flying through the Western North Carolina mountains and just helping everybody with the broadband. The, the reality is this is a very complex topic and the complexity boils down to really a community getting involved. Ideally, a community of um, 150 or more homes as part of this process, uh, just due to the economies of scale and um, the components that are used to come up with creative solutions to get broadband, to improve broadband. And that is another page on our, on our website. Leaving the topic of uh, communities and, and broadband, the community surveys, um, we are empowered. Uh, each and every individual that's here during this video conference knows the value of different elements of uh, leveraging broadband and uh, high-speed internet. So we also have uh, an association, SAG Newman, uh, one of our consultants on our, our team actually worked for the FCC. He is a technologist and is exceptionally knowledgeable about um, the implementation of FCC and, uh, and, and the history and the involvement of broadband. So in a nutshell, when we talk about broadband and Western North Carolina Broadband Initiative, um, we're talking about advocacy. There is a digital divide. I believe that Land of Sky has presented um, information where it's estimated that 13% of our homes in Buncombe County alone do not have um, access to, to broadband. And if we go further out into Western North Carolina, that figure grows considerably. The reality is um, the major uh, implementation or changes requires funding, uh, may through, be through the state or through the federal government. And as a result, um, we have to have advocacy. We have to have policymaker communication to, to tell those stories. Just like Heather said, you know, she's expected to do a job, a very important job. She's competing um, with others that have to do homework or, or social uh, type attributes at home. The net effect is she needs her broadband improved. These are the type of stories we need to reinforce, and especially with this group on the topic of telemedicine. Um, telemedicine and the topic of connectivity through, through high-speed internet has just recently blossomed tremendously due to COVID. And our legislators and policymakers who are located in Raleigh, North Carolina, um, don't realize how much of a hindrance um, the mountains can be, the trees can be, and to getting high-speed internet available to us. So um, we have an advocacy team, uh, actually a member uh, with Western North Carolina um, University as well, uh, as part of this representation. Uh, Anitra, is there anything else you would like to add? Nope, you did good. All right, very good. So I'm gonna move forward. Uh, again, if you go to our website, uh, Western North Carolina uh, Broadband.org, uh, there is a site uh, link that says actions we can take. And there is a portable document format, a PDF document that talks about the broadband situation in Western North Carolina and the actions that we can take as leaders, may it be in the school or medical profession to improve broadband. And uh, I'm not going to go into this de detail of the actual PDF itself, but it, it is on our website. Um, moving forward to the, the next topic at 
wncbroadband.org is the topic of speed test and, and mapping. Um, we have to objectively return data just like um, you do as a medical representation of broadband in Buncombe County, you have data you have to return. That data is likely in the form of numbers of individuals and, and dollars and services provided. Broadband is the same thing. Our policymakers have to make decisions out of objective data and gaining objective data is a true struggle. And as a result, our website has something called a speed test. And I'm gonna share with you a, a screenshot um, of that. It's, I'm sorry, not a screenshot, it's an actual video. So in preparation for this um, presentation, I recorded a video from our speed test tool called M-Labs, and there are many of them. This happens to be the one that is listed on our Western North Carolina Broadband page when you click on speed test. You click an agreement, and I'm going to quickly play this video, and you'll see what happens on the, on the speed test. Um, it runs a test and there is this like clock that starts turning and that clock right now is measuring the upload speed as being roughly 10, 11 megabits per second. Now the speed test is measuring the download speed and it's giving me a representation. In this case, this was taken at the front desk of the Western North Carolina um, broadband uh, uh, mission, excuse me. And uh, because of the mission critical nature of what we do uh, at the front desk, high speed broadband is actually necessary um, for the, the functions that we do at the mission. Uh, the, the good news is that broadband is considered high speed. The Federal Communications Commission or FCC defines high speed as having at least 25 megabits download and in here on the speed test through M Labs, it showed that I had 38.78 megabits per second at that time, given the number of people that were using that network and, and the other servers that we were connected to. And then the upload speed as being 10.72 uh, megabits per second. You compare that to the FCC with the FCC saying high speed internet is considered at least three megabits per second. And the, the reality is um, when we go home or we're at home and we're video conferencing, we're not just downloading from Netflix or consuming YouTube video. Because you are showing your video on your computer, your audio, you are actually uploading. So as a result of COVID, internet service providers or ISPs are learning that, oh my gosh, this, this uh, original benchmark of 25 down and, and three megabits up is probably insufficient. And I bet you when we talk about questions and answers here in just a minute, that the group is gonna have some comments about how even on Zoom, it, it, it says unstable internet. That unstable internet is Zoom's way of saying, oh, oh, we're struggling to present the video. The video starts getting a little choppy and if it's really, really bad, the audio starts getting really, really choppy and, and, and bad. I'm going to, again, relate to a story with Karen Sanders. Um, she, she has a, a business from home, the RN Patient Advocacy Training Institute. And we do Zoom co conference calls numerous times. And Karen was getting a message that was saying on Zoom, um, insufficient bandwidth or, or, or poor, poor internet. And it turned out uh, when Karen called her internet service provider, which I believe was, she said was AT&T, they recognized that the, the actual, uh, I believe it was coax cable coming to her home was insufficient and they wound up running a second coax ca cable to support her um, bandwidth transfer needs there. So again, if you have a question on that, we'll, we'll try and answer some, of, some flavor of that afterwards. Um, uh, Anitra, is there anything else on the topic of um, speed testing that you would like to add? No, nope, it's pretty good, but it's it's very important, like if you want to do a self-check, I guess, of how fast your internet is and whether or not you need to upgrade or downgrade, depending on like what your needs are. Very good, very good. So sometimes, uh, again, that, that pipe coming to your home, a copper telephone line has limitations, a... Uh, 
a cable uh, coming to your home has limitations. It's when you get fiber to your home, it's like, oh my gosh, this is the heaven of being on, uh, on the internet is having that high-speed broadband. And uh, the implementation of fiber is, has a major opportunity in Western North Carolina. So as, a, as I come to a conclusion of, of this presentation, it's very common for Anitra and myself and our Western North Carolina broadband team to get questions uh, about, uh, my, 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 I have real issues with uh, uh, broadband and internet connections at home. This is a slightly advanced topic, but if I were to summarize how to improve your bandwidth in your home, there are five tips I wanna share with you. And those five tips really involve two pieces of hardware in your home, one being a, a router. That router is likely to have your telephone wire or your, your cable uh, running into, uh, let me see if I can get this here, running into that, the, the back of the unit. And here we go, oh, almost had it. Get this out of the way here, I'm getting my pointer. so. This appears to be uh, an actual uh, cable line going into the router. These are, are uh, what are called uh, coax, I'm sorry, th th these are, um, oops, these are, are uh, wired connections that will likely go to your wireless modem. And most wireless modems will have antennas. And those antennas are what are providing the Wi-Fi connectivity to your home and your multiple devices. So if I were to summarize the, the tips for improving um, your home internet, the first one would be to know what is normal. So just like you do in your telemedicine with your patients or anybody you meet, we need a benchmark. We need to know what is normal. What is the normal blood pressure? What is the normal skin color? What is the normal temperature? Um, all of these elements are very similar in the hardware environment, uh, including the router and the mo modem. They are communicating to you a blinking or a solid light. It could be a red or green color. If you know what is considered normal, um, as far as the displays that are appearing on your router or on your modem, or that could even be signing in online to a portal, you have the benchmark of knowing that that's what your hardware should be doing. Um, very commonly, um, there are issues. These are computers, um, even your laptop, even your smartphone will have issues going through a power down and a power up of the router, the modem, and your computer has absolutely incredible powers in, in, in fixing many of your issues. Uh, Ethernet cable is what I was looking for earlier. These are Ethernet cables um, you can actually disconnect one of these Ethernet cables. And if you have an Ethernet port on your laptop, which is older technology, you can skip the wireless router and, and a wireless modem and connect directly to your router. And you are eliminating the opportunity of a, a wireless issue. And you can do a speed test directly from your uh, router. Likewise, you can take a cable and, and plug it into most uh, wireless modems and not even do the wireless function. You're using 100% of the capability of the speed and, and likely you'll see some pretty uh, significant improvements there. Doing that can also uh, do some diagnostics. Is there a hardware failure on either one of these components? As a general rule of thumb, um, one of my clients um, who lives in Givens, um, she has the state-of-the-art uh, iPad. She has a, a good newer um, MacBook, um, iPhone. But as it turns out, um, this individual's router was seven years old. And that router could have been contributing to issues that she was having. So if your router or your modem is generally more than five years old, consider getting it replaced. Some of you may actually own your equipment. Some of it may be leased through um, Spectrum or AT&T. Um, again, if you know the normal information of your hardware, you can do some Google searches on the serial number, the model number, um, the actual label on the bottom of these pieces of equipment will give you a, a good indicator as to when that 
uh, equipment was manufactured. If it says the year 2010 on it, being a decade old, that, that equipment isn't keeping up with the technology needs to Heather's comments. Um, you know, all, with all of the connected devices or probably newer devices and the newer speeds. Uh, so you may be getting high speed internet to this device, but because you have an older piece of hardware, it's not able to serve those many devices, which leads me to the fifth significant piece of expert advice. Um, your router and your modem um, are connected, uh, or what provides that connectivity to many devices. And Heather had the right strategy that she recognized that if she asked her children, the other members of the family, to stop uh, using the Wi-Fi that would improve her video experience or audio experience on the video conferencing. Sometimes it may mean uh, asking somebody on their telephone to disconnect um, the wireless connection from your smartphone and to tell your smartphone just to use cellular. So on, on my iPhone here, uh, if I go in and I, I tell my smartphone, I want to shut off Wi-Fi, I am forcing this device to use cellular data. And that cellular data is being independently run from the, the broadband that I'm using here at this co-working space. All of these uh, expert advice tips came from this uh, Apple podcast that's th th listed down below. So if you want to get really techy and learn more insights about um, this particular topic, the address is listed at the bottom of this page. So uh, in closing, before I, I talk about our social channels, Anitra, is there anything else you would like to contribute? And uh, I'm not here where I can see if Anitra is still on the line, but I do want to mention uh, Western North Carolina Broadband Project has uh, recently stepped into the social channel world. We've moved to not just having a website, but to have a Facebook presence, to have an Instagram presence, to have a, a LinkedIn presence, to have a YouTube presence. And um, I'm at the back end of many of this, and I am super impressed how Twitter has figured out exactly what our business is about. And Twitter is making suggestions of legislators or other contact that are engaged on the topic of broadband. And as a result, our team is able to improve the opportunities of, of getting higher speed internet in Western North Carolina. So in conclusion, I, on, the, on the slide here, I have my email address as mark at Western North Carolina Broadband um, .org, WNC Broadband .org. Anitra is a student at UNCA and, and, and she is helping out uh, as an intern. Her address is, is also listed here. And again, our website being www.ncbroadband.org. So Stephanie, I'm going to uh, bring out this uh, presentation and let me see if I can see. We actually have a question inside the Zoom chat that I didn't know how to answer that. So I was sorry, I was quiet for a bit. I was trying to research and see if I had the answer for that. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Anitra. What was the question? Um, it was about WNC, WNG, let me read it. How does, how slash does the WNC broadband project relate to the West NGN broadband task force? It's a part of the Land of Skies, new 2020-2024 comprehensive economic development strategy. Yes, uh, a, a fantastic question. So we do work with Land of Sky Regional Council of Government, specifically Sarah Nichols and Erica and um, Nathan Ramsey. Um, who re represent um, th that previous portion of um, uh, opportunity in, in developing uh, broadband. W we uh, work hand in hand with the West Gen uh, opportunity um, uh, of uh, teamwork. Um, I probably could come up with a better answer and, and need to improve on that, but uh, for those of you that work at, at Land of Sky, again, Sarah Nichols is uh, our, our liaison for what the West Gen um, product. Thanks, Mark. This is Allie. That was my question. And I just, I've been digging through that um, development strategy 
recently. So I was aware that they were doing that and just wanted, you know, I like always when things are coordinated and, and talking to each other because what you're doing and what they're doing um, really seems super important for our region. And um, um, looks like there's another question from Karen. Yes, so Karen's asking, can you please, Mark, can you please speak about the Wi-Fi lot internet address, which shows which businesses have free access via their parking lots? This okay. was. Yep. Karen, thank you so much for that. And uh, I failed to call that out a little bit more. It's actually Sarah Nichols at Land of Sky, who through the, the Western North Carolina Broadband Project has put together a, a map and that map is called Wi-Fi Lot for uh, Land of Sky, Buncombe County. And the, the Wi-Fi map itself is an interactive tool that if you type in um, into your web browser, uh, let me go to the actual address. It is uh, www.loswifilot.org. It will take you to this map that I have here. And I'm gonna share this in the, in the chat, but it shows different locations in, in Buncombe County and the area county where you can literally take your vehicle, drive up, and they have increased the bandwidth or set up special hardware where uh, high-speed internet can be provided for the benefit of students, uh, the moms and dads needing to apply for uh, social security or do interaction. Um, this map is drillable and you can go in and see these uh, Wi-Fi lots that are available in, in your community. And we're hoping to continue to work with Sarah and, and, and growing uh, these spots because of uh, the services that are, are being provided there. So great question, Karen. Again, the, the website address is loswifilot.org. Uh, I'm gonna put that into the chat right now so that we have that available. So very, very good question, thank you. There's another question. Um, Joey Abel's asking um, about any efforts to ensure all K-12 students, particularly those low-income rural residents, have broadband access in their homes in light of COVID-19 and the possibility of some or all of their learning being remote. Absolutely, that, uh, that is probably a major opportunity and we do have a liaison with the Asheville, uh, city of Asheville, which I haven't had the opportunity to speak with yet, and likewise Buncombe County. Um, you know, significantly, these are kids um, that are experiencing digital divide uh, in varying degrees uh, from not having access or needing to drive into the proximity of, of their school, where um, the school has set up some some degree of a, a hotspot. Um, this is a flavor of the urgency of what we're looking forward to moving moving ahead, but uh, it's not a, an instant on or off type topic because of the framework and the creative solutions that are needed to implement it. So it's kind of interesting, it's turned out that many of our schools, um, may it be the elementary, middle, high school, um, have super, super great bandwidth, but those buildings are vacated now. And the state of North Carolina and the federal government are actually looking at how to uh, take those nodes and further share that high-speed internet that internet that is available for for the community so it is definitely a topic that we're addressing and um, I wish I had a better answer for you but uh, um, please uh, send me an email give me a call and we'll, we'll try and take chase down some better information if possible um, while I have this group here, I would like to ask the group about telemedicine. Does anybody have any telemedicine stories that they would like to share of what's working, what, what's not working um, in Western North Carolina? I'm happy to share. This is Jessica Whitehill from, the, from Jewish Family Services. Um, we converted our mental health counseling program to um, telehealth. Um, the third week of March. And um, equipment is definitely an issue, but that was somewhat resolved um, when uh, we, now, now that we're allowed to use the telephone um, for, for Medicare billing. So that's been very helpful. 
We have loaned out cameras to a few clients who um, have wanted to try telehealth. Um, we're not hearing necessarily that broadband is an issue. It's really more of the equipment. And um, so on the, the other thing that we're doing um, using um, internet and Zoom is our Elder Club program. And equipment is a huge issue there. Equipment and the caregiver to help um, set that the individual up, um, the participant up for the service. Um, but we're, we're just really grateful that some of these things exist. We're using a platform, a telehealth platform called Doxy Me. Uh, I think there's a number of good platforms out there, but this was just suggested to us by a, a, a clinician who had been using it su successfully. And we're happy to talk to anyone about how this is working, um, how the platform works, and um, anything else that we're doing. We're, we're doing a lot for clients on Zoom right now. Um, but the, it's really the equipment and access to tablets, smartphones, laptops. That's our greatest need right now. So Jessica, th thank you for bringing the, that up the hardware element. Um, I'd like to further add, our team did some research and uh, Goodwill um, has a affiliation with Dell Computers. Uh, Dell Reconnect, I think is, is the actual program. Um, first of all, Western North Carolina Broadband Project, we're working on creating a donation page for the philanthropy of people that might be interested in financially donating um, towards the cause and, and hopefully working towards uh, helping minimize um, the hardware, the cost, the educational materials. But the awesome part about Goodwill is Goodwill is receiving an overwhelming amount of used equipment. They're receiving so much equipment they can't keep up with recycling it and repurposing it because the stores have been closed. They're in desperate need of um, help um, to help uh, recondition the, the products. They actually recycle 100% of the uh, hardware um, to repurpose, recycle, reuse. Uh, in my association with AARP and working with uh, Rebecca Chaplin, we learned that uh, a huge benefit with working with Goodwill is when you donate a piece of hardware, like a laptop or a mobile device or a tablet, that they will wipe the hard drive to Department of Defense standards to ensure that your, da your data, your privacy is kept there. So there is some philanthropy that's going on and we have the good benefit of one of the Western North Carolina Goodwill facilities that's uh, helping out is here on Patton Avenue. Um, sadly, COVID has closed their retail or minimized the re retail store hours and they're having to adapt. So that, that is something that we're working with and uh, the uh, Western North Carolina Goodwill Association out of Winston-Salem. Thank you for the feedback. And anybody else have telemedicine, telehealth comments? I mean, audio is still there. That's uh, the effective way of communicating and it is a, a flavor of telehealth. The, the, the benefit of having video has unique attributes. Does anybody want to share a story about uh, the video teleconferencing, how that has helped. And Mark, you're really transitioning us well into, I want to continue to encourage folks to offer um, questions to Mark regarding his presentation as, and his expertise. Um, but we also wanted to use a portion of this meeting today to kind of share what you all are doing, what you're experiencing as far as connecting to those older adults that you've been providing services to or folks you're trying um, to connect to new um, participants and programs and services. So what have been some of your challenges? Where have you been collaborating with um, maybe people on this call, but other uh, organizations or resources outside of aging services um, to make sure that our older adults are, um, they may be physically isolated, um, but we wanna make sure that they're very connected to not just health, but um, you know those social connections and um, resources and everything else. So, all right, Stephanie. So uh, I'm going to bring to closure Anita. Uh, thank you for joining us from Charlotte, North Carolina. Anita, I'm going to stop the recording and thank you for allowing us to record it for the benefit of 
others in the Western North Carolina Broadband Project. So thank you for allowing us to make this presentation, Stephanie. Oh, thank, thank you me. very much.